Um, so in this last example, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we need to do is, so in this last example, we have uh, two functions. We have negative absolute value of x, and we have x squared plus 1. Okay? So when we're looking into doing a problem like this, um, basically what we want to do is graph both of them separately. So if you guys remember the absolute value function, that is the V-shaped graph, right? It's been up there since the beginning of the year. But we are multiplying by negative on the outside, so that means that we're going to be reflecting it d d d down. down. So it looks something like this. OK? Now, on top of, um, on top of that, it's saying that we only want to talk. We only want to deal with this graph when x is less than or equal to zero. So x is less than or equal to zero. Basically, everything left of the y-axis, correct? So that means everything to the right of the y-axis is not going to be included as far as my graph. Zero is included. The next one, x squared plus one. That's a quadratic, right? You guys have been doing this since algebra one quadratics, and we have x squared plus one. That basically means you're taking the quadratic function. Nice little parabola, but you're just shifting it up one. However, this is saying only are we going to talk about this function for when x is greater than 0. So everything, x is only greater than 0 for all values to the right of the y-axis. So I'm going to erase that, and I'm going to put a nice little hole there. All right. So now let's go, ahead and let's go ahead and talk about our limits. So as x approaches 0 from the right, we are approaching what value? What value are we approaching from 0 to the right? 1. What about 0 from the left? 0. What about from the left and the right? Does not exist. So if you have a piecewise function, just graph them separately. Okay.